Welcome to Legal Toolkit, bringing you the latest legal trends and business initiatives to help you manage your law firm with your host, Jared Correa. You're listening to Legal Talk Network. Welcome to an extra special episode of the Legal Toolkit here on the Legal Talk Network. If you are looking for a Game of Thrones podcast, may I recommend Cast of Thrones featuring Tim Lanning. Yes, that Tim Lanning. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're a first-time listener, hopefully you'll become a long-time listener. And if you're Gordon Hayward, you made the right call. And now Utah hates me. As always, I'm your host, Jared Correa. And in addition to casting this pod, I'm the founder and CEO of Red Cave Law Firm Consulting, which offers subscription-based law practice management consulting and technology services for law firms. Check us out at redcavelegal.com to learn more. You can buy my book, Twitter in One Hour for Lawyers, from the American Bar Association, on iTunes, at Amazon, and probably at the Rabbit Hole in Kansas City, Missouri. And may I also give a plug to Oklahoma Joe's in Kansas City the finest barbecue in America, and I'll let our guests debate that if they have issue with my selection. So here on the Legal Toolkit, we provide you each month with a new tool to add to your own legal toolkit so that your practices will become more and more like best practices. In this episode, we're going to talk about a new daytime television show, Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is going to be something new and exciting for me, and I'm really looking forward to it. But before I introduce today's guests, let's take some time to thank our sponsors. First, Scorpion crushes the standard for law firm online marketing with proven campaign strategies to get attorneys better cases from the internet. Partner with Scorpion to get an award-winning website and ROI-positive marketing programs today. Visit scorpionlegal.com forward slash podcast. Next, Answer One is a leading virtual receptionist and answering services provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800-ANSWER-1 or online at www.answerone.com. That's www.answer, the number one, dot com. Finally, this podcast is brought to you by Amicus Attorney, developers of legal practice management software. Let Amicus help you run your practice so you can focus on what you do best, practice law. Visit amicusattorney.com and get started today. Now, on to the show and our guest. Today, I've invited Dana and Keith Cutler onto the podcast. They are the co-judges of the Couples Court. Welcome to the show, Dana and Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this should be fun. So, I just name first. Is that right, Keith? That's how I should do this? Uh, I'm good with that. And I'm glad he's good with it. <laughs> All right. It's going to be Dana and Keith. All right. But before we get started uh, and talking about your new show, tell me a little bit about your backgrounds. Well, um, we have been married 28 years. We've been a couple for 35 years. We met freshman year of college and have been together ever since. Went to law school together. We have wow. three adult sons, um, 26, 23, and 19. And we practice law together and have practiced law our, our entire careers together. I do education law working with charter schools and Keith is a uh, civil defense hmm. litigation attorney. Oh, attorney. interesting. You both have different um, niches. And so, yeah, so that's that's us in the big capsule. Um, with the show, I'm going to let him tell you about the show. Yeah. Uh, Keith, let me know how the show, let me know all about the show. Couples Court, hit me. All right. Well, Couples Court with the Cutlers, it's a daytime television courtroom show, and it features couples who are having conflicts or complications or disagreements in their relationship. I mean, usually one partner is accusing the other partner of cheating or of being dishonest, and the other partner is there to prove their innocence. And so it's a courtroom setting. Dana and I are the judges in the courtroom. We're the first married couple to preside over a television courtroom. And as we try to uncover the truth and get to the bottom of whatever is the issue between the couples, we use a wide variety of evidence, uh, such as lie detector tests, and cell phone forensics, GPS tracking, private investigators, decoys, the whole nine yards. Oh, wow. So as the couples are trying to convince us of their version of events, uh, Dana and I are the judges, and we try to just get to the bottom of the matter. So this is cool. So you have a courtroom setting, but you've also got heavy reliance on technology, which I think is pretty interesting yeah. these days. Yeah. Um, and 
you can tell these couples, right? I mean, you've seen each other pretty much every minute of the day for the last 28 years, and you guys are still doing great. So can't be uh, that hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> we, we tell people that um, that is pretty unusual. And actually, we very interestingly yes. have very different practices. So at the end of the day, I still have to say to him, <laughs> what did you do today? Uh, because I'm doing my thing with my clients. He's doing his thing with his clients. So we, we literally are not seeing each other every minute of every day. I don't think we, as much as I love him, I don't think either one of us can stand that. <laughs> so. so let me ask you this. But, Your practices don't focus on family law. It doesn't sound like really in any way. How did you get involved with a show like this? It was crazy. Um, it, about a year ago, <laughs> we got a call from a uh, talent agency mm-hmm. here locally in Kansas City, and they said this show was being considered, and they were looking for husband and wife uh, uh, lawyers. And we said the same thing. Yeah. We don't do couples, uh, family law. Um, we've never been on television. And they're like, your name keeps coming up. Would you like to try it? I personally <laughs> thought we were being punked by some friends. And um, I, I must have asked the girl about five different ways that she know this <laughs> friend of ours. And she was like, I don't, you weirdo, stop it. And uh, <clears throat> ultimately, ultimately, it was for real. And um, we interviewed by phone, by Skype, um, and they kept calling us back. And we kept thinking, what's wrong with these people? And the rest is history. Here we are. So literally picked out of the Midwest into a whole new life. That's really funny. Um, so you had no inclination. You did not necessarily have any desire to do this. You just got plucked. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't our radar whatsoever. Huh, wow. And so did you did you think it was interesting in the sense that it was different from your existing practice areas? Is that one of the reasons why you wanted to try it? Well, I, th- I think that was part of it. And what we found is, even though it's not necessarily in an area that we practice, as we listen to the couples on couples court and we listen to what their problems are, uh, they're life problems and they're things that with Dana and I having been together, you know, married 28 and another seven before that dating, so a total of 35 years. I mean, the experiences that we have enjoyed living together, raising a family together, practicing law together, just enjoying life together, uh, we are able to use that to really help the couples figure out, okay, what's going on? What's your root problem? How can you move past this? And so there are some legal issues that come up, and I think our general legal training is more than sufficient for us to be able to handle those issues. But in terms of the couple aspect of it, the love part of it, um, I mean, we just draw on our life experiences. So I got to ask you, and I, I do want to get to the legal stuff in a second here. What if there's a tie? What if Dana wants to go one way and you go the other? Do you thumb wrestle? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I try to use all of my legal (laughs) persuasion skills to convince her that I'm right. And if he doesn't, (laughs) and and, and the reality is, if he can't convince me legally, he winks at me and he knows that gets me every time, so. (laughs) I'm such an easy mark. All right, so the tiebreaker is... The tiebreaker is Keith winking. I will watch for that on the show. <laughs> now, before we get to a break, I want people to know so they can watch. Um, when and where can they watch uh, the show, Couples Court with the Cutlers? Uh, the show will be airing all over the country. Uh, we premiere uh, beginning September 18th, and viewers can check their local TV listings for the channel and time in their area or they can visit our website at CouplesCourtTV.com. Okay, everybody here, that CouplesCourtTV.com, and I'll let you say that a couple times throughout the show as well. Um, This has been fun to start with, but we're going to take a quick break. Answer One is a leading virtual receptionist and answering services provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800-ANSWER-1 or online at www.answerone.com. That's www.answer1.com. Feel like your marketing efforts aren't getting you the high-value cases your firm deserves? 
For over 15 years, Scorpion has helped thousands of law firms just like yours to attract new cases and grow their practices. As a Google Premier Partner and winner of Google's Platform Innovator Award, Scorpion has the right resources and technology to aggressively market your law firm and generate better cases from the internet. For more information, visit scorpionlegal.com forward slash podcast today. Now, on to the show and our guests. Thanks so much for coming back. How do you feel? Rested? Let's get restarted here with Dana and Keith Cutler, who are here to talk about their new show, Couples Court with the Cutlers. All right. In our last segment, we were talking a little bit about the structure of the show. And one thing that's clear is we're going to be talking about the legal significance of technology applications. So let's address some of that. So snooping on one significant other. How does that happen? Why? How often? Et cetera. Let's start with probably a common issue. If you know your partner's smartphone password, is it legal to view their text messages? Yes. Um, if you, it, well, it depends on how you got it. If they voluntarily provided that password, then yes, they've opened the door. If you have surreptitiously received it, you know, looked over their shoulder while they were typing it in or something like that, probably not. But one other factor that you could consider is who owns the phone and who pays the bill. If you own your partner or your spouse's phone, you pay the bill, you bought the phone, you can, um, you have access to it because of that ownership piece to it. And the reality is like they could go to their uh, phone provider and get access to your phone. They could go and say, we'd like to get the text messages. I could go and say, I'd like to know a log of calls that have been made over these periods. So those two pieces, did you get it voluntarily or do you own the phone or the services providing, being provided for the phone, those would factor into whether or not it's legal for you to do so. And, Jared, I can tell you a number of the couples that we see on Couples Court, uh, they exchange passwords in the beginning of their relationship. And then as one partner starts to drift astray, either he or she forgets that they gave the other partner their password or they change it, but the other partner somehow finds out about it. And so uh, we have a, a number of the cases that we hear where, yes, the other partner has gotten the password because it was given to them. And the question is, okay, are you using it uh, in the manner that you should be using it, or are you going beyond the permission that was given you? Oh, that's interesting. And I would guess that most cu- within uh, most couples' relationships, one person pays for the phone bill and the phones, right? Usually. Or, or, or they have separate yeah. phones. I mean, if you're going to be a cheater, mm. uh, you probably should not let your significant other <laughs> buy your phone or pay for your phone that's kind of like cheating that's true 101. premeditated cheating yes <laughs> if you're going to do it do it right right but, um, get a burner phone if you're going to cheat yeah all right i like that <laughs> and you were you were about to give me a real answer and then you said it depends at the outset and that's how i knew you were a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait thank you question mark <laughs> <laughs> no exclamation point. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's let's talk about another piece of this. Um, is it kosher for someone to use a GPS tracker to follow a partner suspected of cheating? And I feel like this has general applicability because that stuff happens all the time on Breaking Bad. So I kind of want to know. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everybody has GPS, you know, on their phones or on their tablets and everything else. Uh it depends on a couple of factors, and there's that loyally answer, it depends again. Um, but it depends on if you are trying to track your uh, partner's car, for example. It depends on who owns the car, whether you have permission to put a tracking device on it, and whether the driver's in a place where there's an expectation of privacy. Uh, but the thing that the viewers really have to be careful of is that many states now have anti-stalking laws. And so whereas you think, well, I'm just putting a GPS on my partner's car. I just want to know where they're going. Uh, you can run afoul of actual anti-stalking laws. Um, and so you have to be careful of that. Uh, an interesting example, in, in New York, well, there is what's know. called Jackie's Law. And in New York, 
You cannot use a GPS tracker to track someone if they've made it known that they don't want to be tracked or followed. And so, you know, anybody who's thinking about using a GPS to track their significant other, uh, they need to check with their local laws and the state laws to make sure they aren't violating any anti-stalking laws. But, of course, you also have all the GPS factors on cell phones and, you know, through your Google apps and through uh, Facebook. And so if you are someone's friend, if your partner is your friend and they can at least get an idea of where you are, it may not be a pinpoint at this particular spot, but they can tell within a few blocks where you are. Um, and that would not be like putting a device on somebody's car. That would be, I'm your friend, therefore I can keep up with you. So, yes. again, all of those yep. pieces are out there and people are, are using them. And we see it regularly on couples court where the partner's forgotten that I'm your friend and I'm tracking you that way. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I was just going to say as well. Um, that's a great segue. Like, this dovetails with the last question. Nobody's turning off their location devices on their smartphones, so they're just on. And if you don't protect your smartphone in the first place, your partner can just pick it up and see where you've been anyway. All right, this is good. All right, I got another question for you. So this has been a big learning experience for me, right? So I've been told that there are human beings named Rob Kardashian and Black China. So this is news what? to me. I watch, Yes, I watch <laughs> History Channel a lot. Uh, my wife told me this is true. So apparently these people are in a relationship and it's not going so well. Nude videos are involved. Nude videos that I have not seen, by the way. So in any event, as a legal side of this, um, if you're super mad at your girlfriend... Could you post naked pictures of her? The, the answer is generally going to be no. Uh, the majority of states have uh, revenge porn laws. Uh, they obviously don't call them that, but that's essentially what it is. There are laws that prohibit you from uh, publicizing or posting or disseminating intimate pictures where the person probably doesn't want you to publicize those pictures. And so the in most of the states, you're going to have a problem with that. In fact, it's 38 states plus the District of Columbia have what they call revenge porn laws. I was surprised um, that New York does not have one of these. They tend to be on the cutting edge, but you've got California. And by golly, Kansas has one, but not New York. So um, and, and in California, it's considered a misdemeanor. Um, and most of the states treat it as a misdemeanor. But, um, you know, the problem with the revenge porn laws is that uh, you see people uh, um, in family court, it's a big issue of, hey, I've got this video of my spouse uh, doing whatever, and they want to bring that into court to show that this person is somehow suspect. I, the only problem is if it's you in the picture with them, I think it makes you both suspect. Both suspect, but that's probably another conversation for another day. <laughs> yeah, you asked whether it was legal, but there's also kind of the moral side to it. And you know, as we're talking to the couples in couples court, we tell them, look, when you're arguing, when you are at odds with each other, never say anything that you can't take back because that cuts very deep. And so when you post pictures like that, once they're out there, they're out there forever. You can't take those back. And you've harmed the person in perpetuity. So uh, th that's more the danger than the legal side of it is just the moral side of it. Uh, if you, you just don't want that out there. Oh, absolutely. The Internet is forever. Well, and that, we tell people it is forever. Even if you delete them from your wherever you put them, you don't know who's mm -hmm. screen snap, you know, screenshot it or copied it, yep. and it shows up forever yep. and ever and ever. So, uh, yeah, that's one of those things. Don't go digital. Yeah, in somebody's server somewhere. Um, all right, so let's let's broaden this topic a little bit, and you address some national laws uh, just now. So, in terms of the data protection laws that a lot of states have now, I think actually every state probably at this point has a data protection law. Has that changed the way that couples interact both publicly and private, privately, at least as you've seen in couples court? 
You know, actually, from what we've seen in couples court, I don't think that the laws have changed the way people interact. I think the way people interact have kind of changed the laws. Uh, yeah, as you know, uh, the law is always behind technology. Technology changes and moves so fast that the law can't keep up. And so uh, I don't think the way people interact have changed. I mean, people are putting their information out there. It's surprising to me what people will post online, what they will put in chat rooms and on social media. And the law is just trying to keep up with that. So the more people put out there, the more uh, walls that people bring down in terms of their privacy, the law just tries to keep up to protect people from themselves. That's a very good point. Okay, so we're going to take another break here. This will give you an opportunity to look up uh, suggestive images of me online. Best of luck. Um, so in the meantime, <laughs> listen to some information from our sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Amicus Attorney, developers of legal practice management software. Let Amicus help you run your practice so you can focus on what you do best, practice law. Visit amicusattorney.com and get started today. Starting your own solo practice is tough. Hi, my name is Adriana Linares, and I host a show called New Solo on Legal Talk Network. In it, I interview successful lawyers who've gone solo and experts in marketing, management, technology, and everything else you need to know that you didn't learn in law school. Find us on iTunes, Google Play, or at LegalTalkNetwork.com. Hey, you made it back. How were your macaroons? We're still talking to Dana and Keith Cutler, the co-judges of Couples Court with the Cutlers, coming to a television screen near you starting on September 18th. All right, Dana, Keith, um, let me ask you this. Is it crazier practicing law in a real-life family law firm or hosting a television show where couples fight about who's worse? Oof. It depends on what day you talk to me. I, you know, <laughs> life is stranger than anything we can conjure up fictionally, and Sometimes things that happen in our practice or dealing with with the schools that I represent, some of the stuff that happens in the schools, I'm like, are you kidding me? And then somebody will show up on couples court and say something. I'm like, what? So it just it depends on what day you talk to me, which one is crazier. But uh, each provide their own um, yes. highlights, that's for sure. <laughs> So you live a life of perpetual shock. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, Keith. exactly. Yeah, from my standpoint, I think what we see on couples court, I won't call it crazier. I will say the emotions run a lot higher on couples court than we see in real life, only because when we're representing our clients in court, we're there to kind of help them keep their emotions down. The couples who appear before us in couples court, they're there. They don't have... Uh, attorneys, and so their emotions are there, they're on the surface, they're raw, and they come out. And you're talking about something that's very personal to people, you know, trust, uh, fidelity, those kinds of things, and so the emotions rise very quickly. And so we try to keep it in check as the judges, but the emotions are there. Um, let's get back to your practice for a second. I think it's Fantastic that you've been practicing law and have been together for as long as you have. That's really a testament to your marriage. I think that's great. Um, let me ask you this. You have different practice areas, but you manage a law firm together. Do you have any tips for any solo and small firm attorneys out there about how they should be managing their law firm to have the longevity that you've had? I would say uh, I have a couple things. One, um, don't be afraid of mm -hmm. change. I think... Um, when we're a small firm, there are four partners here, and we have become very adept at adapting to change. And I think for most attorneys, you think I'm going to be an environmental science attorney till from now until my last breath. And sometimes the market um, yes. forces you to do something differently. And if you cannot bend you will break. So my suggestion for small firms mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. keep your eyes open for opportunity and don't be afraid to make a move toward that. It may become your your new big breadwinner and and don't be afraid to do that. Yeah, be flexible. That's great. 
Keith, do you have anything to add? I would add that you really have to love what you do because loving what you do is what gets you up in the morning. It's not going to be the accolades. It's not going to be the money. It's not going to be uh, the prestige or anything like that. But what you love is what's going to get you up in the morning. And to maintain a small business over the long haul like we have, I mean, I think that's what has kept us going. We actually love what we do, and we love doing it together. And so I I think as you kind of interact with us and talk with us, and you see that that love of what we do, the love for each other, and the love of us doing it together, all of that plays into Dana and Keith Cutler and Couples Court. Oh, I like how you brought it back there. It's all about love. Love your work. Love and watch couple score. I feel you. So I have one <laughs> last question for you. You're from Kansas City. Um, I think Oklahoma Joe's is the best barbecue in Kansas City. Am I right or wrong? It's real good. It's real, real, real good. But there is a couple places uh, that we would recommend if you oh. if you were to come to Kansas City. All right, City. good. You ready? Yes, yes. Let me know. <laughs> okay. The- yes. I'm writing this down. Okay, Brubeck's Barbecue is at okay. yep. uh, 435 and Nall, or 435 and Row. Excellent barbecue, and they let you bring your own sauce. I love that. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm I'm down with that one. All right, what else um, you got for me? Gates Barbecue, I think, has the best ribs and brisket, um, and I like the sweet sauce. And then for like really kind of like the like sausages, I'm a big fan of LC's barbecue. Wow, that was that was a robust series of recommendations. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, that. as a native Kansas yeah, Cityan, now Jared, I'm not a native Kansas Cityan. <laughs> Keith, do you agree? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 All right. I'm not what a native do, Kansas Cityan. I was born and raised in Washington D.C., but I've been here in Kansas City for over 30 years. <sighs> I'm going to give you the most loyally yep. answer to a barbecue question you have ever heard. <laughs> you ready? Oh, Lord. All right. Let's do it. Here it goes. Yes. Yes. You know, sometimes when you want a burger, you want <laughs> McDonald's. You don't want Burger King because the burgers taste different. You want a McDonald's burger. Sometimes you want Wendy's. If you want Wendy's, if mm-hmm. you've got a taste for Wendy's, Burger King is just not going to do. Sometimes you want Burger King. So it depends on what you have a taste yes. for, what burger is going to suit your fancy at that moment. That's the same with barbecue. Mm. Sometimes you want the taste of Gates Barbecue. Sometimes you want the taste of Oklahoma Joe. Yes. Sometimes you want the taste of LC's or Brobacks. They have different tastes, different styles. just depends on what you're in the mood for at that moment. Okay. You see, somebody doesn't want to stick his neck out. That's what I see. <laughs> Put your neck out there, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> are you are you winking over there? Yeah, winking. Is that what's happening? It's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> winking hard. <laughs> well, that was, I actually thought that was a better barbecue response than I've ever had on this show. So, so thank you. And now I'm super hungry. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're going to have to shut this down. <laughs> so that's going to close the book on another episode of the Legal Toolkit. I, for my part, learned that there's a Kardashian brother, so that was interesting. Um, I'll be back on future shows with further insights into my soul, the soul of America, and the legal market. But if you're feeling nostalgic for any of my dulcet tones, you can check out our entire show archive anytime you want at LegalTalkNetwork.com. Thanks again to Keith and Dana Cutler of Couples Court with the Cutlers. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So Dana and Keith, can you tell folks again about how to catch your new show? Well, beginning September 18th, it's airing all over the country, and viewers can check their local TV listings for the channel and time in their area, or they can visit our website at www.couplescourttv.com. All right. Thank you, everybody. Check out the show. Check out the website. Dana and Keith, thanks again for coming on. That's Couples Court with the Cutlers starting September 18th. Thanks all of you out there for listening, and I think somewhere, Joe Walker is probably smiling. Thanks for listening to Legal Toolkit, produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. Join host Jared Correa for his next podcast covering the current business trends for law firms. 
If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. All right. Usually it's much smoother than this. <laughs> it's We're ironing it all out on the front end. <laughs> That's right. The back end will be nice and smooth. <laughs> and isn't that what we want with our back ends? <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, I like this. This this promises to be a very good show. All right. <laughs>